ground air supply. Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well, and welcome back to DCS. So as many of you know, I recently upgraded from an Oculus Rift S to the HP Reverb G2. And I've finally gotten my graphics settings to the point where the game feels smooth enough to play for long periods of time, and hopefully smooth enough to record as well, although I think there is still quite a bit of shakiness that I need to tweak out of it, at least in terms of recordings. So what I'm including on my screen here now, which you should see, is the graphic settings that I am using on my computer for the G2, and my computer settings can be found in the video description below. Adjust it up or down slightly from that, depending on what graphics card, RAM, and processor that you have. Um, I don't use any additional mods in terms of uh, VR optimization. I know there are some VR optimization mods and reshade mods you can get out there. I used to have them installed on DCS, but recently I reinstalled the game completely fresh on a new hard drive, and I thought I'll see how well I can get it running without any modifications done to the game. And I'm actually pretty happy with how well it is performing so far. I've had to dial down the graphics a tiny bit compared to using the Rift S because the resolution is so much higher and it's obviously you know using more power from the computer but the difference visually for me is negligible and the immersion is still 100% worth it. I play DCS with both VR and Track IR. I usually just use VR for my own personal fun use on the side and then if I'm going to record a proper video on DCS or stream DCS I tend to do it with track IR just because it's easier to see chat and things like that but that's just my own personal preference. I'm one of those people that can switch between track IR and VR re really 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 easily. I know with some people it's VR or nothing or track IR for nothing but I enjoy them both. So this video is a bit of a demonstration of the performance that I'm currently getting in single player with these graphic settings and I'll probably post another video in the near future with the performance on multiplayer servers. So enjoy this video, there are some clips with the F5, the BF109 and the F18 to show how the performance differs on different maps and settings. Perfect, we are clear to go. Raise the nose wheel. Roll up. Airborne. Pull to the right a little bit today. Which is bumpy on the ground. Gear up. Laps are up. Did he just get slapped by a Sam? No. Can't have. Alright, there's another one that's turning in, so we are gonna do a high speed turn hopefully that fox 2 should do it always oh, popping flares ah yeah wasn't good enough for you there was it buddy ah oh, damn it they launched a cab though right, we're gonna go up and over and uh, get this guy with guns Should be able to catch it. And this is a drinking fuel, though. He is going slow for his attack run. We might be able to gun him out before he gets there. Yep, there we go. Goodbye. Alright, well that felt pretty butter smooth on my end. Feel like I'm getting no frame drops. Let's, uh... Alright, 
part two of the test is with the World War II assets, and it's already feeling pretty butter smooth, so we'll see how we fare against a P-51D in the 109K. I've barely flown any World War II stuff in DCS, so this will be interesting to see how it performs frame rate wise. So far it does feel pretty good overall. And the graphics are a bit of a downgrade compared to using a flat screen obviously, but from an immersive perspective it really has no contest. Oh, I think I overled, no underled that maybe? Oh yeah. Oh, I think he might be going in. Maybe? Oh, well, maybe not. He lulled me to a false sense of security there. Right into the bloody sun, of course. We hit the tail. I don't know if we cut the tail control service or not, though. Maybe not, because it looks like it's still operating. Oh, yeah, that did something. I think he's on fire? Nope. Well, regardless of my shitty flying, the, uh, the performance feels significantly better from a frame rate perspective. The big test will be doing this on multiplayer servers. Now he's on fire. And for the final test we're going to do a carrier launch. Now I imagine this is probably going to tank the frames a bit more because there's quite a few assets loaded in here. So we'll see how bad this looks on the recording. Oh, well, that's a bit quieter. Yep, yeah, we are hooked on. Throttling up. Saluting. And off we go. Well, the frame rate is actually pretty good for that. I'm quite happy with that overall. Yeah. I've had to drop the graphics a tiny bit compared to the Rift S, but the difference isn't actually noticeable for me. I, it, yeah, and the, the, the sharpness from the G2 makes up for it. Yeah. This this is promising. This is this is very promising actually. Alright, now that we've hit the coast, let's do a quick FPS test to see how this thing handles near the ground. Altitude. Altitude. Yes, Doris, I know I'm going low. Okay, this is looking pretty good so far. Frame rates still feel good. Hopefully the recording reflects that, but on my end here in the VR it is butter smooth so far. At least for a basic test, I'm interested to see how this performs on Syria and the Persian Gulf maps. 
but for now I'm pretty happy with this base level performance. This this could be this could be doable. Single player. I don't know about recording and doing multiplayer stuff, but my own personal enjoyment, this could do very, very well. Quite impressed with its performance on the G2 so far, and I can read everything nice and easily with the improved resolution. So yeah, I consider this a win. I consider this a win.